It's October 13th, 2023, and I'm here in Arizona for the annular solar eclipse event that is crossing over the United States, Central America, and South America. Probably should explain what an annular solar eclipse is. This is when the moon goes in front of the sun, but not entirely, which leaves a little bit of the sun visible around the moon. And that's why people call it a ring of fire eclipse. And that's what we're trying to capture. This is a Gathla Peak in Northern Arizona. It's like just shy of the Utah border. And just look at this thing. It's insane. It's huge. It's really, really huge. And I'm here with Doug. Here he is, he's my partner in crime. Hey. Hey, hey. It looks like the moon out here. Rocky, craggy, awesome landscapes. Pretty excited. We're out here on a scouting mission the day before. The eclipse is tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. And we think we're in a good spot, but uh, we're gonna find out in the, in the morning tomorrow. We're gonna get here pretty early. Bone marks the spot. Yeah, bone. we found a bone. Bone marks the spot. There it is. Ultimate goal is just get a still frame of the Ring of Fire Eclipse. If we get at least that, we're in good shape. We're ready. And scouting missions for photography adventures are critical. We spent all afternoon here trying to figure out the right spot, and I think we did it. So we're here to nail the shot while we have the opportunity. That's the whole point. When you're a photographer, you need to be an opportunist. You need to be ready to move when the chance is here, especially for astrophotography, where chances can be rare, few, far, in between. The sun's rising, it's the day of the eclipse, and we are just two hours out from the eclipse beginning, and we're about to hightail it to the north at our featured place that we showed you yesterday. Gonna be tackling a bunch of different shots, but we'll get into that mess later. But for now, our party expanded by one extra person. So I wanna introduce you to someone right here. Yo, what's up, Tan? What's going on? This is Tan. He's also known as Chasing the Milk on TikTok and social media. Uh, that's how we got connected was on TikTok. And this is the first time we've ever met in person. Uh, we were just a voice and maybe a face uh, through a vertical video app, uh, but no longer. Uh, this is real life, right? This is it. This is <laughs> yeah, dude. Super excited. So, Tan, what are you most excited about for, for today? Uh, this is going to be my first time really shooting the eclipse. Um, I shot it back in was it 2017 yeah it was with the gopro uh and i didn't really count it so i don't know i don't know what to expect i'm just really happy to be here um i know it's cloudy in missouri so i'm just happy i got to uh, escape that yeah dude i mean we're a, bu a bunch of midwest fellows uh, escaping the treachery of midwest weather but i'll take it for blue skies all the way around 360 blue skies so i think we uh, we played our cards right man hell yeah yeah i can't wait we're gonna we're gonna head over to the site in just a, a minute here and uh, we'll get ready for the big event yes ready yep yeah let's do it So we are at our peak location and we have set up all of our gear. You can see cameras one, uh, I can't do this, one, two, and three right here next. There's Doug, you've been firing some shots. Oh yeah. The eclipse has begun. It is just arriving at the top of the sun. Uh, I'll show you a little picture here of what we got so far. It looks like it's getting a bite taken out of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got cameras everywhere. There's Tan in the distance. What's up, Tan? Can't see you, but... Yeah, he's got solar glasses on, so you can't see anything but the sun. Pretty exciting. Uh, let me give you the tour around the, the base here. Tan, show us, tell us about your setup real quick. We've got the Skywatcher 72ED, 400 millimeter focal length, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, this is a Canon EOS R mirrorless. Shout out to Spencer's camera for hooking me up with that. Hey, nice. Uh, we're using a the Benro Polaris tracker, which is going to make it really easy because I don't have to mess with the camera. I can enjoy and look at the sun and know that I'm going to be taking photos the whole time. Back here, we have the Dwarf Lab, the Dwarf Smart Telescope. Shout out to those guys. This is pretty much tracking the sun as well. It's got a focal length of 560 millimeters. So that's pretty nice. nice. It's got filters in it. And then back here, I'm just doing like a wide time lapse of all of us because I thought it'd be kind of cool to see us 
doing our thing. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Doug, tell us about your setup. What do you yeah, got? I've just got a straight uh, Sony A7R3 with the Sony 100 to 400 G Master lens, Yee. shooting at 400. When you got your stylish glasses on. And I'm glassed up. Yeah, <laughs> yep. In some cultures, that means something different, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and over here, I've got uh, 150 to 600 uh, Sigma lens here with my Sony a7 IV underneath the uh, towel here to keep things cool. I've got a monitor running it so I can see a little bit better. And then I've got a a7 III on a 35 mil to get a wider shot and I'm running intervals on that. And then, like I said, we've got a GoPro here in the distance to get the wide. That's the Hero 12. Hopefully that turns out. But here's the eclipse as it's happening right above the peak. All right, as I was saying earlier, absolutely critical to have solar glasses during any solar eclipse, in particular annular eclipses, because there's no point where the moon covers the sun entirely. That's the only time that it's safe to take off your glasses is during a total solar eclipse. So we've all got our glasses on, we're prepared, and we're enjoying the moment in between the photography. Like the photos are important, we're getting the shots, but there is time in between. The eclipse happens across three hours. The Annularity is like two minutes. That's the tight spot, but the rest of it we got time So in those moments, I think it's super critical to be You know using this time to look up and enjoy what the event is look around see what's changing So we are probably like 75 or 80 percent complete on the First part of the eclipse and it is almost annularity time We've noticed that our eyes are not as squinty as we had thought or as, as they were at least, um, the reflectivity on the ground is a little bit less. Not super noticeable yet, um, but it is a little bit cooler. There, yeah, there's a little bit of a, the breeze coming through is, is like, man, that got, that got chilly because the sun was definitely heating us up. Not a single cloud anywhere to be found. That's a plane up here. That's a plane blown through. Um, no clouds. 100% ideal scenario for an eclipse event, unlike my 2017 eclipse event where this happened. We have a giant cloud right in front of the sun. It's big and fat and it's going super slowly. So we may be out of luck. All right, so as we are less than 10 minutes away from annularity, I did notice something and I have no idea if it's gonna show up here. So right there in the middle of the screen, 10 minutes away from annularity is the planet Venus. We can see it very clearly as we get closer here. It's just a little bit away. Are the birds doing that thing where they think it's nighttime? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. We can hear the birds starting to respond because they start, they're like, they're thinking it's nighttime beginning, but it's not. And this happened during the total eclipse too. We are less than one minute away from the annular eclipse. I'm reaching the final seconds here. It should be visible. Yep, there it is. Yep. Full annularity. Enjoy it, fellas. This is what we're here for. So awesome. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Dude, enjoy every second of it, man. You get a whole nother minute worth of the best moment of your life. Yeah. What do you think, Doug? How you feeling? Awesome. So good? So good? Oh, so good. Here it is. This is an amazing, amazing event. Annular solar eclipse happening right now. Tan, tell me what your thoughts are, man. How's it, how's it for you? That was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Definitely, uh, it's definitely going to be a core memory, and I'm excited for the uh, the 2024 eclipse in April. So yeah, should be cool. You get it. This is awesome. This is too cool. Can't handle it. Wow. I knew it was going to be cool, but I didn't know it was going to be that cool. <laughs> <laughs> so it's dark, but it's not dark dark. I mean, you could tell it's like a cloudy day. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was for some reason. I thought it was going to be like pitch black. It's darker when it's full. There's yeah, the, still a lot of light coming around that thing. But yeah, just about to exit the lower left side. I think that's it right there. All right, it yeah. is past. Yep, officially past the moment of annularity. We're coming out on the other side and uh, it's looking cool. It's pretty nerve wracking when you got like four or five different cameras running and you have to keep track of all of them in, in your brain and kind of partition each one off. Like, is this one running? Is this running? Is this running? Sometimes you just gotta hope and do the best you can, but also a little bit of homework makes a big difference. Okay, we just packed everything up, lugging all this gear. 
and we are saying goodbye to Agathala Peak. Thank you for your service, kind natural monument. We had a really, really wonderful time, really special moment to be out here. And uh, we're gonna be doing some more Milky Way photography over the next two nights. It's gonna be a, a good time. We're gonna try to meet up with Tan again later today. Uh, but now we get to rest. The pressure is off. <laughs> I might have a ton of weight on my shoulders right now, but uh, metaphorically speaking, I feel a lot lighter. You know, the whole trip banked on this and it was a success. It was a huge success. Uh, so much fun and uh, even better when we get to do it with other people who care too. So gonna head to the car. We're gonna go enjoy the rest of our trip. It's our final day here out west, and we traveled to Vegas where we're flying out of to go back home. Uh, but we did make a pit stop 45 minutes southeast to Hoover Dam, one of United States' most magnificent engineering marvels. But we decided to make a little excursion right before we head on the plane to return home because we wanted to put one more jewel on the crown of adventure. Um, and I want to just recap this event for you here. It is always worth it to plan trips and efforts to go achieve your goals. Uh, maybe in my case it was photography to get an image of a solar event. But for you it might be something different. Make the effort, make the time, and most importantly do it with people that you care about. Make room for spontaneous uh, adventures, like mix a little teaspoon with spontaneity in there, have some fun, meet new people. Doug, it was awesome to be on this trip with you. Thanks for being my buddy. And Tan, thank you so much for joining in. It was great to meet you. And uh, of course, to all of you out there, hope you saw the annular solar eclipse for yourself. If not, go ahead and enjoy these images here at the end that I captured. Until then, I will see you all on the other side.